So you would have just seen the time lapse of this printing which is a USB holder designed by me. It's on my uh, Thingiverse page. Um, and this printed on the uh, printer here. Though both printers were printing at one point, this one um, behind the screen here, or the reason it's behind a screen, um, which just hooks onto there, is because it now has a laser mounted onto it. Um, though I could, it could always start printing again, I just need to put a couple screws back in for this, and I need to remount the, uh, well, I don't need to, but I, I, I don't need to remount this whole assembly, but I at least need to remount the cooling fan for the hot end, um, and this assembly has the mount for the cooling fan for the hot end, as well as a parts cooling fan, um, which this didn't print very well, the overhangs on it, because I printed it on a printer without a parts cooling fan. Um, I found that on Thingiverse somewhere. Um, I'll put the link to it if I can ever find it again. Um, someone else who has an FL, FL Sun printer designed that. Um, I have one on here which printed a lot better because I had a cooling fan. Um, and if I can find where I put the part that just printed. Here it is. Um, you can see the bottom of it isn't perfect, and I've been having this issue lately with the, this white PLA. Um, but I don't have it with all filaments, and I don't know if it's because I'm printing it at too low a temperature or too high. Because this filament, you can see the bottom, this is the bottom side of it, um, when it was printing, printed a lot better. Um, so I, I mean, it's not like I'm not having issues, but, um, I, I'm hoping they will work out with time. Um, and maybe it's just I got a bad batch of PLA here, and it has, like, water in it or whatever, which is causing it to pop and, uh, make the bottom like that. Um, so I have a time-lapse of it printing, and then this is, uh, the lac. So I drilled some holes for, um, oh, um, one second. So I drilled some holes for the, um... Bowden tubes to pass filament through the lax so I can run it down. Though I would probably, I, I tried doing it with some tape, but a filament guide here would probably be ideal so I don't get too extreme an angle before it gets pulled into the extruder. Um, so I will either design one of those or look for one on Thingiverse and print that. Um, this printer, it also has a um, Bowden tube mounted through the lac. Um, so I could pass filament through there. You can see this is uh, what's left of the black PLA I was using for a while. Um, bundled up. And you just kind of pass that through, and I don't have a long enough free length, but it passes through rather smoothly, um, and it would just come out and obviously get pulled into the extruder, and I'm not really filming that, which is why I'm not really filming handheld anymore, unless if, if I can help it. Um, but this is too big an item to film with my uh, little 3D printed camera mount. Um, which I might make another video on eventually. Um, because I'm really awful at filming handheld. Um, so the time lapse, I'm probably going to show you the one with my phone because it's much higher quality. Um, but I did also try to film one with Octoprint, so I'm not sure how that turned out or if it even turned out at all. Um, because I do have this camera here. Um, both printers have light strips mounted on them to illuminate the work area. Um, this one for the mostly, uh, the, the reason I originally put light strips on them was for the sake of the camera on this one, but then I just liked how it looks. Um, and apparently that's a trendy thing right now, though I just thought of the idea on my, um, own because of the camera, but I can see why it's trendy. It looks quite nice. Um, and it's not all that hard to think of. It's a pretty obvious idea. I mean, just stick a light strip on it. So I'm not saying, like, I don't know. It's, it's not a that impressive an idea, but, um, I didn't realize other people were really, they were, I didn't realize it was really a thing until, um, after I did it, and I saw that lots of other people had done it too. Um, both printers have power buttons and ATX power supplies, I'm just using, uh, the 8-pin CPU connector in these, which I think I showed in my last video. Um, the LAX, these are half a LAC leg. Um, and then this is duct tape for looks, though I ripped it here for some reason. Um, and I have some additional wood and 
and some 3D printed inserts um, to get the hardware in. It's, it's complicated. I maybe should have filmed the build process. I have some more paper here because the laser you're not supposed to look at. There is a gap here and I put tape up but then it fell down. Um, and I might put more tape up, but over here I don't have any, um, cover, but then this is pretty close to a wall. And the only thing that's back here is a little bit of storage, so it's fine. Um, and then, so, yeah, it's nice that, uh, this has, this can laser cut now, as well as, um, print if I wanted to convert it back. All of the screws are up here, along with spare filament, some wood for the laser cutter, some laser safety glasses. I think I have a Pi Zero up here. I don't know if this is a Zero W or a Zero. I have an inductive, uh, bed sensor that I might eventually mess around with. Uh, though I have to deal with configuring that in Marlin. I have a glue stick for the printer. This is kind of like my, like, printer, uh, equipment storage area up here. Which is a pretty good use for it. Um, this is basically trash because I'm powering the Pi off of the standby rail of this uh, ATX power supply using um, a, a USB plug I bought from AliExpress, and it included a casing. Yet the casing didn't fit around the gauge of wire I was using um, because I'm using super overkill wire because that I had. Um, and I showed it printing, and I showed my setup, and I don't think there's anything else to show. If there is, uh, tell me, and I'll try to show it, and that is all.